<sighs> Hello everybody and welcome to my Monday Night Raw review. A lot of things going on in this show tonight. Shit, a lot of shit going on today, I should say. Um, you know, one thing, everybody's losing their minds right now over this whole uh, Elon Musk buying Twitter thing that happened today. What do you buy for? About, what, $45 billion? I'm assuming, um, you know, I'll, I'll give my little quick thought on this. Um, you know, I'm not really going over my head because it looks like I've just seen people just lose their shit over Elon Musk buying it. And just he just said they're deactivating their Twitter or I'm done with Twitter or what even Mick Foley kind of what trying to I, I read what he had said talking about like, I don't know if I want to be on Twitter to the future of this platform. I'm like, yo, is this like, why is everybody losing their shit for? OK, um, listen, you know, Twitter is a tricky thing that people that like Twitter hate Twitter. But then again, some would say if you don't really want to be on here, just deactivate the Twitter and be done. Because the only thing I've seen back and forth all day about this whole Elon Musk thing is just, you know, about free speech and sh censorship and um, whatever's going on with it. Or people trying to ban you because of whatever reason or you're not allowed to say anything or you're going to be blocked off or... You know, it's it's a lot of things you could say when it comes to Twitter. But then again, anybody says anything on Twitter nowadays. So, like, people talk shit all the time or say something crazy. I see it every day, okay? I use Twitter, okay? It doesn't really bother me that much. Like, you can either just block the person or just scroll on through or just don't really even interact with them and stuff, okay? If you don't really want to deal with whoever you want to deal on there on Twitter with. But, y you know... You know, like I said, it's it's Twitter, okay? Um, I don't know what's going to happen now since Elon Musk bought it, and I don't really know much on EM, Elon Musk uh, anyways to really determine what's going to happen. Uh, I will say the only w way he can make people turn away from Twitter, and I don't think it'll happen, but if you make Twitter now like a subscription base as in, you know, pay for it, then yeah, maybe that will turn people away because Twitter's always been free for years and stuff. But um, now you want people to um, pay for it. I'm like, I, I hope that doesn't happen. But um, that'd be a bad idea if people had to start paying for Twitter. But like I said, I'm not gonna go in everything that um, you know, that people losing their shit about. So I'm already saying it's about politics or um, a, a lot of stuff. Okay, so hey, he bought Twitter. You bought Twitter. Like I said, it's a billionaire, multi-billionaire buying it and stuff. So hopefully you don't make any too crazy changes that people will go away from it but i just think it's kind of crazy like the minute they just this guy just bought twitter that people are already just losing their shit as in like it's damn near the end of the world or something like that and like i don't want to be on this app i don't want to be on this platform i don't want to be on this it's like like i said twitter motherfuckers are crazy on twitter every day okay you can go out there and say the most wildest stuff and You'll get some back and forth argument. Or you can say, if you don't want to hear it, just block them and go on, move on about your day. So, that's all I really got to say. Like I said, I'll probably look into more detail about it, what will happen with this. But, um, I'm not really going to lose my shit over Elon Musk uh, buying Twitter, okay? Um, like I said, I use Twitter, so, you know, people like to use the word, it's toxic on there. Well, shit, you got to fight fire with fire sometime, Okay. Some would say it's one of those either you get down or lay down type of things. So just scroll on right through. But I'm not going to deactivate my account or get off because some people said some bullshit. Okay, to talk shit back or just block and move on or whatever. Okay, like it's Twitter, all right? Like I said, I've used this shit for years now. Uh, but maybe I'll find out more detail at a different time. But Monday Night Raw, though. Let's get into that. Monday Night Raw. Uh, tonight... Is the 20th anniversary of Randy Orton. And they had half the roster out there uh, watching on as um, Matt Riddle was in the rain, basically setting up a video package for Randy Orton being, you know, here for 20 years straight in the WWE. Because today, April 25th, 2002, it was when he first debuted on SmackDown against Bob Holly. I have that uh, match on DVD. I think I said this in my SmackDown review, but I do have that match on DVD when he first debuted in the company and there are many things uh you could talk about randy orton's career just from the beginning to being an evolution um just the many 
titles he's won. Uh, you know, like I said, 14 time world champion, youngest world heavyweight champion. We can't tell you who he beat though. They, we can't talk about that. We know he beat Chris Benoit, but you know, they can't say that. But uh US champion, Intercontinental champion, money in the bank winner, two time uh Royal Rumble winner. Uh you could go from many of the feuds, um shit tag team champion right now with um you know, Matt Riddle right now, RK Bro. Hell, we can go to R rated RKO with Edge if you want to go from there. But we can go just from the many feuds uh, Randy Orton has had throughout this many years. Of course, John Cena. Actually, it's so many matches you can name between those two. Uh, but John Cena, Triple H, uh, Shawn Michaels, Batista, Undertaker, um, you know, um, Flair, uh... Right, like Edge, Edge himself. Um, you, like it's it's a lot of feuds you can name with Randy Orton. Okay, it really is. Like I said, the guys that that have like multi-time title reigns. Um, like I said, I'm just going on most of the accomplished. I really know most of like just the feuds and people he's gone against. Mick Foley. Uh, like I said before. Like, um, also, so just like many great matches you can name. Um, with Randy Orton and stuff. Cause like I said, we know where he came up and. Like I said, like I said, the guy's been a great spot for many years now, especially when he was at Evolution. You know, Hunter, Flair, and uh, Batista out there. But like I said, I said with R Red RKO, um, shit, Legacy. Um, you know, with Cody and um, Ted DiBiase out there. Um, like I said, two two thousand nine. That was on. It was a different level for Randy Orton. No, I should say that was the more psychotic. Just damn near kicking everybody. Well, he was already kicking people in the skull, but at that point, that was the most psychotic version of randy orton um of just kicking people in the head but like i said we can go on from the legend killer you know with a match with you know cactus jack and backlash 04 um uh, we can go from the viper the apex predator of course but shit, we can go talk about the rko out of nowhere videos online that were um hot a few years ago okay um like i can say it's many things you can name and randy orton's career all right and uh it is a very big accomplishment to be here 20 years straight uh, in the WWE and the level he is on right now, which he still has a lot in the tank and can still freaking go, okay, like, dude was the champion, like, what, a year or two ago, I believe, he was the WWE champion, so, um, yeah, it's like I said, R Randy Orton, man, it's, it's a lot you can say about Randy Orton, I'm just saying on the positives right now, but yeah, um, you could talk about a lot when it comes to him, but, you know, Orton came out there then, um, you know, talked about how, you know, he was born in Knoxville, Tennessee, since they were there. He says, hey, look up on Wikipedia, but, you know, uh, it was cool to be holding this 20-year uh, anniversary here. There's been a lot of ups and downs, twists and turns in his career. Um, you know, he says, anybody sick of me? I'm not going anywhere soon. Talk about how the years have just flown by. He talked about all the feuds, like I said, you know, uh, the people he's faced, Cena, Triple H, Taker, Flair, all those guys. Um... And talk about there would be no legend killer if it wasn't for Mick Foley. Um, Orin basically talked about, you know, he's having the most fun in his career right now. Due to Matt Riddle, uh, fans start chant RK Bro. And, you know, just from, you know, like I said, just he's had a lot of ups and downs in here. But, you know, you've always came back. Talk about the fans. You've always supported me um, and stuff. And he basically loved everybody out there. Um, Riddle said, I got a surprise for you. You know, uh. There's someone that uh, wanted to come out because you say you were a mentor to him. Um, and so kind of like he is right now. And Cody Rhodes came out because, like I said before, Cody Rhodes was with Orton at one point. Shit, back in 09 and stuff. 08, I believe. Legacy was around. Um, so, come on. We remember that whole thing. We haven't said DiBiase. But, uh, yeah, Cody Rhodes came out there. He hugged Randy Orton um, and stuff. Uh Basically, before you could even say um, something, I believe, Seth Rollins was sitting there didn't telling Cody Rhodes, you know, hey, Cody's going to steal your spotlight out there. Like, he stole mine in WrestleMania and stuff. And Rollins basically said that everything's about him. Uh, this night is supposed to be about Orton. And, uh, you know, he said Orton's best years in the past. I just, let me not forget. I, could, I should talk about Seth and Orton feud at one point. Of course, we got to talk about the RKO back at WrestleMania 31. Uh <laughs> How that went, let's not forget about that. But um, he said, but Seth Rollins went on and said that Orton is not the past or the present or the future, and neither is Cody. Okay, 
Um, people need to be inspired by me, he said. Ezekiel came out there saying, I'm one of the newest people around here. I'm the younger brother of Elias. And uh, Orton says, oh, you're, you're Ezekiel, okay? And he shook his hand. Uh, Kevin Owens called him a liar then coming out there. I'm the only sane person around here. We know who you are. The Usos came out then basically talking about, hey, what's up, Randy? You know, we was 15 when you just started, okay? You know, we was down here at first, but now we up here. And at Backlash, we're going to take them tag team titles. Which, of course, this set up an eight-man tag then as Adam Pearce uh, announced for later on into the night. So we knew that was going to happen. Um, next... Um, Bianca Belair went against Cyan Deville uh, for the Raw Women's title. Cyan was already in the ring. Yo, good to see Kane back there. You know, the mayor of uh, this city, Knoxville, Tennessee. So, um, yeah, it's Bianca, you know, where she's from and stuff. And, you know, like I said, you got the mayor formerly known as Kane there, too. But um, this match. Uh, well, first, we had this match going on, uh, which didn't really go that long because Bianca threw Deville over the announce table, which was count out. Uh, but then DeVille said, you know, um, no, 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 we're not doing this. Restart. Uh, no count out. And then they fought outside then. Um, and DeVille, like, you know, threw her into, like, the timekeep area. And then used the chair to hit her, which was disqualification. So, no, 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 we're changing this again. No disqualifications. No count outs. Then, for some reason, Carmella and um, Zelina Vega show up. Which I could have swore they were not a team anymore. But it basically turned into a three-on-one then. And it still ended up with Bianca getting the win with the KLD fighting off the odds and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I'm surprised we didn't see more of Adam Pierce getting pissed off at DeVille, given that he was pissed off after what happened last week. But now we're just having abuse of power out here of changing the rules by any second. And Bianca still ended up winning and retaining the title after hitting the KLD and stuff. So, um, yeah, I'm sure Pierce may do something. But, yeah, she's just, you know, using power just to... Uh, do anything, get a rematch out of this, and still loss. Uh, Carmella and, Zel and Zelina talk about, you know, hey, man, um, we want our title, our tag title shots and stuff, which the bill says, you failed to do your job. You couldn't get it done, and um, you didn't help me. And they say, yeah, we try to help you win, but, you know, sign up slapping Vega in. Uh, Carmella's going to slap her, but um, Sion said, I'm still your boss. End up slapping Carmella to the ground. Uh, next, we got Edge back there, basically talking about the city of Knoxville, and I guess talking about Kane, then talking about, um, what, AJ again, and people trying to call him, like, another Undertaker. This is Dark Edge and Dark Priest right there, just with the throne and stuff. Like I said, I know the Undertaker 2.0 stuff is gonna come in, talk about AJ Styles' arm, and how he couldn't keep it, um, up at WrestleMania and stuff. Uh, you know, he talked about your shoulder being separated at that Royal Rumble match from before. And that, you know, the Judgment Day is arriving for Finn Balor tonight and stuff. Veer beat up Sam Smutters. Another squash match. And then he hit the guy on the table. And that's surprised the table didn't break. these tables didn't break tonight. But, um, man, he must be reinforcing these tables or something. Because they really weren't breaking out there. Um, but, um, yes. The table. The table. <laughs> yeah, no table breaking. But, yeah, Veer won. And, like I say, he put the guy on the table, then hit his, like, submission hold on him and stuff. Um, so, it wasn't really that, I guess, um, <laughs> I, I don't know, impressed by it. So, yeah, Veer just destroying people as a heel. Someone wondering, like, did this guy just dap up uh, Orton earlier? So, is that he a face or is he a heel now? There you go. Uh, next, we were going to have the, um, the arm wrestling contest between Bobby Lashley and Omos MVP star kind of promo and then you know got what chance we got a lot of what chance throughout the night like people were chanting what damn near the whole night but um and then uh you know MVP's telling him to shut up as he's talking about almost and stuff and uh basically that almost gonna crush um Lashley and stuff and uh basically tear his arm off his wrist which Bobby Lashley ended up winning that um arm wrestling contest but then um Almost ended up beating up Lashley then, even taking the table and slamming it onto um, Lashley several times before throwing the table to the outside and stuff. So, yeah, um, it, it was okay. You know, heels beating up the face and stuff, um, trying to destroy Lashley. So, we'll see what happens next. I'm sure it'll be another match at some point, maybe a backlash. Um, Truth, I guess, had some video thing early in the day where now he's in, not even a minister, now he's a counselor. Which we um, basically said, y'all gonna have to get uh, get along and stuff. Uh, basically, it was Reginald and 
uh, Dana Brooke versus Tozawa and Tamina. Nobody really cared. They really didn't. Um, Tozawa and them won. And then True tried to help Dana Brooke out and tried to pin her for the title and ran off. I, it's the 24-7 stuff. I got nothing really to say about that. Um, Becky Lynch came out there. We haven't seen her since WrestleMania. Looks very disheveled. Um, doing her... Um, I, I don't even know what she's even doing out here. But basically just took off her glasses and saying like, I'm done. Okay. It's been three years since I've walked out here without that title. And stuff, and it's the first time now, and she didn't want to show her face on Raw, but um, basically, you know, she didn't rec recognize herself at, uh, you know, WrestleMania and stuff, but um, basically, you know, she's hit rock bottom, uh, but now there's nowhere to go for up, and, you know, this is on the verge of another legendary comeback, so, yes, yeah, so Becky Lynch is now crazy, and, like, I will get my precious, my precious, she looked like a goblin out there, she looked like just a crazy goblin Person, which it looks like nobody's really interested in this, you know, new persona of Becky as it is already the big time Bex thing and stuff. So a lot of people, fans, that I can agree, also a little bit more and more that it's either become cringe or very annoying now. And she's like, my precious, uh, something like that. I'm gonna get it back. I'm gonna get my title back. My title is gonna be back. I'll be the champion forever. You won't stop me. I've beaten every woman around here, okay? And I will take the title back. But next thing you know, Asuka making her return uh, in her, all her, got back in her regular again, r regular gear again and stuff, but got a pretty big reaction. Asuka was back. Um, Basically, she yelled into the microphone and stuff. Fans started to chant Asuka. She says, I will stop you because no one is ready for Asuka um, and stuff. Uh, Becky, like, she tried to take a swing at Asuka. Asuka was about to take her out, but um, Becky ended up getting out of Dodge then. So, Asuka, we have not seen Asuka since uh, Money in the Bank of last year when, they, when the fans came back, you know, doing a full pay-per-view and stuff. So, yeah, Asuka, um, Asuka's back, folks. So... Good to see her again. Hopefully something big will happen for Asuka. I know we've seen Becky and her before in the past. But, um, you know, I'm sure Asuka most likely will go over and hopefully some, they got something for her. But it's just nice to see Asuka back in general, okay? We haven't seen her since Money, like I said, Money in the Bank of last year. And people were wondering when Asuka was going to come back. So, yes, Asuka is finally back tonight, folks. Uh, Street Profits are kind of promo. Basically talking about we want to smoke whoever wants those, uh, wins those titles at um, Backlash. Finn Balor went against Damian Priest. Edge was on his throne uh, in the back, basically trying to make it look darker back there, turn the lights down and stuff. Um, the match wasn't bad, but before Balor hit the coup de grace, Edge just basically stood up out of his chair, and then um, Priest ended up hitting like his uh, finisher and stuff for the win and kneeled to um, Edge. Like I said, some Undertaker-type shit out there, so... Uh, like I said, I'm sure the Undertaker 2.0 jokes are gonna keep happening and happening, okay? Um, next, Miz TV happened, as, uh, you know, we were talking about the career of Randy Orton, but now he had a guest, which was Austin Theory, or I guess Theory now, um, you know, he's the new U.S. champion, uh, and everything, he says, you remind me of a young Miz, okay? And, you know, you'll get there one day, all right? Um, Theory says, hey, I grew up watching you, it's like an inspiration, once again, the fans, they what chance then? Miz told him to shut up, but the what chance got louder. Um, Austin Theory says, you know, um, I'm a great investor according to Mr. McMahon and stuff. Um, you know, Theory's just going to bring the title to new heights. He's the youngest uh, U.S. champion in history. and uh, he, But, he, were, you know, you will be remembered as U.S. champion and stuff. Miz basically said, listen, you got a target on your back. Everybody's a parasite. Everybody wants a shot at you, okay? So you need to watch out. Uh, Miz basically, um, you know... Everyone should earn uh, the right instead of just, you know, doing open challenges and stuff for this for this title. Next, you know, Mustafa Ali was back out there. We haven't seen Mustafa Ali, I believe, since October of last year. So, where's those free Ali things online now? Obviously, he still works here, okay? Um, I'm not going to go into the whole thing why Ali has really been off TV and the reason and behind that. But, yeah, Mustafa Ali is still in this company. As some fans did chant, welcome back. Wasn't really a big reaction. I mean, they were more shocked to see him, maybe. But wasn't really the biggest reaction out there. Uh, Miz says, you still work here? Um, uh, and stuff. Um, you know, say, so, hey, ain't you the guy that took your ball and went home and everything? Are you Mufasa, the, the younger brother of Mustafa Ali? 
Um, but when Mustafa Ali says, oh, yeah, you want to hear a joke? Yeah, the joke is watching you wrestle, miss. Um, but basically, I was backstage discussing some things with Adam Pierce, and um, you know, I heard about Miz TV, and, you know, I want a challenge for that U.S. championship, okay? Um, but there he says, nah, you ain't getting it, all right? But Ali said, um, you know, are you um, we're just all uh, biceps and no balls and stuff? Uh, Mustafa I said, basically went on, you know, you just running away from a fight. And uh, Theory said, you know, Miz, um, hey, uh, Miz is a former champion, he's a, tra a trailblazer, a future Hall of Famer and stuff. And the Miz doesn't run from a fight, but Miz says, listen, uh, I know you want to spy, you want to have a match, but it's not going to happen, all right? But also Theory said, hey, man, I texted him, uh, Vince, all right? I, I texted Mr. McMahon. You got a match with Mustafa Ali up next, which Miz is like, oh, really, right now? Okay, then, uh, basically. But then he told, um, he basically told Mustafa Ali, when I'm done with you, you're going to wish you got your walking papers. Which uh, Mustafa ended up slapping uh, Miz then, and then we got the match between both of them. So, mm. oh, excuse me. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, like I said, Mustafa Ali, though, being back in general, um, yeah, it, he's he's back, folks. But I believe... Um, like I say, he's just mostly, we haven't seen him since October, but then he at least tried to get his release back in, was it January he tried to get his release or something like that? But, um, I, I don't know, like, the, the crowd was, I would say, up and down. Maybe, I'd be just shocked to even see him in general, okay? I don't know if, you know, he got that big of a pop and everything, but, yeah, it was like Mustafa Ali, it's like, hey, he's finally back. So I guess they worked something out in the back, folks, they worked something out. He did go against Miz, though, which Mustafa Ali did win, uh, basically rolling him up after dodging the figure four. But right after Tommaso Ciampa attack, Mustafa Ali, for some reason, we don't know why. Uh, but him and Ciampa should be good, depending on where it goes. Rhea Ripley was in the back being interviewed, talking about why she turned on Liv Morgan. And she said she's finally opened her eyes. She was the Raw Women's Champion when she came in. But now I've been out with all these tag teams, and they're trying to bring me down to that level. And I'm not going to keep dealing with this. Her and Liv Brawl before we moved on to the next segment. Um, Kevin Owens was talking to Gable and Otis about the whole lie detector test thing last week. Um, and stuff. Rollins came in and, um, you know, Gable told him to shush and everything. Which Owens says, alright, you guys can go, alright? I'm not going to pay you guys again. But Rollins said, uh, you know, look at everywhere for Kevin and everything. Alright, where you been? But Kevin says, hey, li listen, listen. I fought. I fought for you last week, okay? Alright, and now you don't want to help me and, and stuff? We'll get through this lie detector the test does. Usos came in, so y'all better get this win for the Tribal Chief and everything, okay? Uh, Rollins says, oh, oh, really? Now I'm going to be on the same page with the Tribal Chief, which everybody just ended up leaving Rollins then to laugh then after that. Uh, but in the main event, we did get RK Bro, Cody Rhodes, um, Ezekiel versus the Usos, Kevin Owens, and Seth Rollins. It was a good match, uh, main event match and everything. One bad. Basically, we got a big RKO fest and everything from Orton just... RK on everybody. I like what he put, it was, you know, hitting people on the table to the outside. And Kevin Owens was like, oh my god, my eye! Before he got slammed on the table and stuff. But, you know, RKO, RKO in midair on one of the Usos. RKO, RKO, RKO. You got to send the, home, the fans home happy. Especially with the 20-year anniversary of Randy Orton. So they got to find a way to end the show on a, somewhat of a big celebration by doing RKO's out of nowhere, and all over the place, so, um, yeah, that's basically all of Raw tonight, okay, but yeah, you know, good for Randy Orton, 20 years, still in the game, still going strong, um, no matter what you want to think about Randy Orton, can't say that the guy's had a very big career, and it's deserving, okay, like I said, I ain't the biggest Randy Orton fan, but, um, this was cool to see just, uh, you know, to where he is right now, with just being a big star throughout all these years, okay, so, very good for him. It was nice to see Asuka and Mustafa Ali back on the show, also making their returns. Hopefully, uh, we'll see what happens with both of them, and maybe uh, the creative forces will help them out this time. I don't know, but um, uh, we'll see what happens with that. Raw was Raw. I, I was like, so Raw didn't, wasn't even that bad. Like I said, I enjoyed the Orton stuff. Um, and, you know, like I said, Mustafa Ali and Asuka, a lot of what chance I'll say we got tonight. A lot of what chance. Bianca going against DeVille, which for some reason we have to do three restart matches and stuff. So, it's a lot of things to talk on the show tonight, alright? But other than that, comment, subscribe, tell me what you think about Raw. Tell me what you think about this whole Twitter Elon Musk thing, if you want to put into that also, okay? Tell me what you think about that. So, um, yeah. Other than that, though, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, at the night 890 I'm out of here. I'll see you guys then. Peace.